So hello React Native developers and welcome back. It is a beautiful morning here in Toronto, Canada, and I'm really excited to bring you guys this new animation. This animation is really exciting for me because I struggled with it for quite a while and it was all because I didn't know what the trick was. Recently though, um, there was a creator named Mewtru on Twitter, and I'll link their Twitter in the description, who showed how to do this animation using the web, basically, so the browser. And after watching their video, they showed what the trick is. And I'm gonna show this to you later in code, but I wanna show you really quickly on here first. So whenever I click down, you see that everything around the mouse gets highlighted, right? All these bubbles grow and it does this nice fancy stuff. Originally, I thought what you had to do was you had to take where the mouse was and sort of look at the circumference around it to see um, what you actually had to highlight. But the truth is actually the opposite. You measure the distance from the dots to the mouse instead of the mouse to the dots, and it makes it really easy to do all the calculations and the code is really short. So uh, shout out to Mewtru for this inspiration. And yeah, let's get into the coding guys. I'm really excited. All right, so we're just gonna start with some simpler boilerplate here. And as always, if you wanna see the final solution, the link to that code is in the description. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is actually make the dots. And we're gonna do that in use effect so that when the component mounts, we're gonna put it all in the array. I'm gonna make it a little bit dynamic by dividing the height of the screen by 35. It's not perfect, but it'll get us started. After that, I'm gonna make an array from um, the amount of dots that I calculated, and I'm gonna set that into the state. Next thing we want to do is create the actual dot component, and it's going to be pretty bare bones for now. I'm pretty much just going to put in the props, which are the index, x position, and y position. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it static for now, just so that we can make the grid. Um, notice I'm using shared value here. This is because the values that are passed, can be passed in need to be um, dynamic and animated. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate what I want the current position of the row to be, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the column. Because there are rows of 12, I'm gonna use divided by 12 and modulo 12 to determine that. And I'm adding 35 just for a buffer and it looked nice. You can pick any number you want. It's a little bit arbitrary. I'm now gonna copy the circle code into the dot and put the row in the column here so that we're able to render those. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is just quickly create some placeholders for X position and Y position. I'm gonna edit these later on, but I need to pass them into the dot. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna loop through all the different dot indexes and for each one, I'm gonna have a dot. Its key will be the index. The index will obviously be the index and the X position and Y position are going to be the shared values from reanimated that I'm gonna pass in. And whoops, I made a mistake. I reversed the column and the row and now we should see the grid. Good, that's correct and what we wanna see. So let's create the gesture here. So when the gesture ends or finalizes, we wanna just reset everything to negative one because uh, you're not doing anything and we don't wanna animate anything at that point. Now, when the gesture begins or when you're moving, it's gonna be as simple as setting the X position to the X position of your finger and the Y position to the Y position of your finger. This one's on begin, and on change, you do exactly the same thing. And I'll just copy paste that in there. Okay, so we're on the last step, and all we're gonna do here is compute what we want the radius to be. So to do that, we're gonna use a derived value, and it's gonna update on the X and Y position. And we're gonna calculate the hypotenuse, and we can just use the built-in math hypot function for that. We're gonna subtract the current X position from the one of the current dot and the Y position from the Y position of the current dot. And I'm subtracting 30 because I add 30 in the CY to push things down. I'm using a range of 55. So if it's within 55, I'm gonna return a width spring animation. I'm gonna turn off the clamping because I don't want it to bounce. But when the hypotenuse is 55, it's gonna be bigger. When it's not, it's gonna be smaller. And yeah, let's save things. And now I'm going to add in the radius and I need to reload really quickly. <laughs> and now that I've reloaded, as you can see, the whole animation works really nicely and the dots around where you are get bigger. Thanks guys. <laughs> 